Hi everybody, this is Chris from SparkFun Electronics. Uh, we're here with another episode of Engineering Roundtable. And this week we're going to be talking about infrared transmission, uh, the kind of infrared that you're going to see in your normal uh, television remote. Infrared transmission is a pretty simple wireless protocol and it is uh, a good introduction if you've never used wireless before. And if you have an Arduino, it only takes a couple of more cheap parts to uh, uh, get working with uh, infrared transmission and reception and playing around with IR signals. We're talking about near infrared light. So light that has a wavelength that is just below uh, the visible spectrum. Um, you can't quite see it. And when you transmit with IR light, you can do it with one of these IR LEDs. Works just like any other diode, except you can't see it. And it's the same thing that's gonna be in the front of this remote control. Anything that works uh, with IR is going to have some permutation of this LED in it. In your device that's receiving, you've got an IR receiver diode. The diode's a little more complicated than the transmitter because it is keyed or uh, built to only receive IR signals that are coming in at 38 kilohertz. When you're transmitting and receiving uh, IR, you're doing so in a flooded environment. The lights uh, on your ceiling could be uh, outputting IR, the sun transmits IR, so there's a lot of IR infrared light floating around, uh, which is why they uh, chose 38 kilohertz as the frequency for IR transmission, commercial IR transmission, to operate on. Today we're going to go in depth about the IR protocol and then we're going to show you a project that I've built that uh, can listen for IR in the air, save the commands and retransmit. Here's a simple graph of the IR protocol. On these axes we've got voltage and time and we can take the voltage as the voltage being uh, what you're passing to the IR diode, the IR uh, transmitter on your controller. Um, so this diode is just connected to a GPIO pin and when you want it on you modulate it at 38 kilohertz and when you want it off it's just off. Uh, so to send this sequence, for example, uh, I would start at zero, modulate at 38 kilohertz for a certain amount of time, back to zero, modulate, back to zero. What is important is the amount of time that this diode is held high or low. The amount of time it's modulating versus the amount of time it's not. That is how you represent data uh, in this protocol. You send this voltage to your transmitter LED. The transmitter LED transmits all that out into the air. The receiver picks it up, but it picks it up along with all of the other IR flying around in the air. So in order to find out what it should be listening for, it takes that signal, sends it through a bandpass filter, and then through an amplifier, and spits out high-low. Now this all happens, this all takes place in the IR receiver diode. It's got the bandpass filter and the amplifier all built into it, and uh, when, it, when it spits out data, it doesn't, it doesn't output it at 38 kilohertz. It outputs it as a series of highs and lows uh, that are represented by the amount of time you held that transmitter pin high or low. So even though the transmitter pin is modulating at 38 kilohertz, what comes out of the receiver is this red line, high or low. And the amount of time that it's high or low is then interpreted by the controller as the command you're trying to send. When the controller takes in that data, uh, the highs and lows, it doesn't take one as a high and zero as a low. The data is represented by the amount of time the signal stays high or low. And this is different for all of the IR protocols, uh, of which there are about a dozen uh, major ones. And each protocol has a different amount of time that the signal is supposed to go or you're supposed to say high or low. This is a representation of the NEC protocol. It's one of the, the first IR protocols, and it was developed by the Japanese NEC Corporation. Um, and it's still used today in VCRs and a lot of off-the-shelf electronics. To send a logical one, you do not send a, just a high signal. You send a high signal for a certain amount of time, in this case, 560 microseconds. Then you send a low signal uh, for 1.69 milliseconds. When the receiver sees this, it knows it is an NEC-1. A zero, on the other hand, 
will be high for 560 millisecond microseconds and then low for 560 microseconds. So instead of sending just high low, you send these sequences of high low for a one and a zero. Now that's the bits that you're sending. Uh, that's how these are represented. Uh, once the receiver uh, pulls in that data, uh, the receiver takes those, translates them into 8-bit bytes, and saves the uh, command or uses the command as just any binary 8-bit uh, uh, piece of data. In the case of the NEC protocol, um, the transmitter will send a series of zero ones, zeros and ones representing uh, the address and the command. Uh, in the case of the NEC protocol, it will send the address, then the inverse of the address, so all the ones become zeros and, and vice versa, then it sends a command and the inverse of the command. So if you want to be doing this by hand, uh, you're going to have to look up the exact uh, protocol, the exact amount of time that the protocol requires for a bit to be zero or one, and the order in which you're supposed to send address command uh, or any error checking stuff. That's important, but this is just one protocol. Uh, if you want to be uh, utilizing any other protocols, then you got to go look up uh, how data is transmitted and the amount of time that the bits are high or low for that particular protocol. It always works on 38 kilohertz. Uh, it's just the, the order at which the bits are sent and the amount of time uh, the signal is high or low. That's not the end all be all. Uh, if you're trying to read something or read some IR or you want to write some random IR, uh, the commands don't necessarily have to be in a hex format. Say you're reading from um, a remote control and it, it's not detecting any particular protocol, uh, not NEC, not RC5, not RC6, well you can still save the, the command and retransmit it, you just have to save it as raw data. So it becomes an array of how long the signal was high and then low and then high and then low um, until you start to see a repeat command and then you know that is your, your data to be saved. You might not be able to represent it in a hex format, but it doesn't matter. You know how long the transmission IR or uh, diode is supposed to be high and low. Now let's take a look at the demo project. The inspiration came from the TV Be Gone, which was a project or a device built by or invented by Mitch Altman. Uh, and the TV Be Gone, what it does is uh, it has an IR transmitter on it uh, and a controller. And when you press the button, on the, the dongle, it's about this big, it transmits all of the off, the known off power codes uh, for televisions. So if you've got a series of televisions in the room and you press the TV be gone, it transmits all the power codes and turns off as many TVs as it can. Uh, and I like that idea, uh, but the TV be gone can only transmit, it can't listen. Um, I wanted to be able to listen to the IR codes you know, flying around in the air whenever anybody used a remote control and be able to capture those and save them and use them to my own devices. I built this box, which I call the IR Shark, um, because I think it's similar to uh, Wireshark, which is used to capture Wi-Fi packets in monitor mode. All this has in it is an Arduino Pro, uh, a transmitter, IR transmitter diode, an IR receiver diode, and a charge board for the battery. Other than that, it's got eight buttons, a serial LCD, and a power switch. Um, so very simple hardware. When you turn it on, uh, it sits and listens on its receiver diode for any uh, infrared commands coming in. So when someone hits a button on a remote, it catches that command. In this case, it heard a Sony uh, 0x410 command. And what it does is it then assigns it to one of these buttons to be retransmitted. Um, and it'll sit and wait until it has eight commands um, and keep assigning them to the next button. Hopefully I will catch a channel up button or a power button. So whatever is being controlled in the room, I now have control of with the box. On the software end of this, um, I'm using a library that was written by a guy named Ken Sheriff. Uh, and it's linked to under this video. Uh, it's a GitHub page and it is a very easy to use uh, IR library for Arduino. You really only have to declare a receiver pin and a transmitter pin. Um, and 
when you're when you enable listening mode, it listens on the the receiver diode, and when it sees a command, um, it attempts to match it to its known protocols. So it sees the start condition uh, for a command and tries to fit that in with uh, known uh, IR commands. So like I was saying earlier, NEC, uh, Sony, RC5, RC6. If it can't match that IR command to a known protocol, it saves it as a raw command. So it saves it as that array of high, low, high, low that uh, I was talking about so that even if it doesn't know what it is, it can still save the command and retransmit it in the exact way that it receives it. Um, so you can have this thing sitting out and be pulling in commands from any uh, IR transmitter that is running at 38 kilohertz. Now we're down here in shipping at SparkFun and we've got our shipping lead, Dane, who's got the remote control for their TV. And he's gonna turn the power on. Uh, at the same time, we're gonna have the IR shark placed up near the television. So that sits there and it's just gonna listen for any IR commands that fly through the air. So Dane turns the power on The television turns on, and it looks like our shark caught an NEC command. That'd be the NEC power command for the television. So now I can walk over to the television, press the button, and the TV turns off. So thanks for watching another episode of Engineering Roundtable. I uh, hope you learned a little bit more about IR, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks for another episode.